Thank you for the introduction. Um, as Anthony mentioned, I'm Christine Dirk, um, and I am presenting on behalf of my collaborators, Tomas Vega and Professor Eric Palos, and we're here from the Hybrid Ecologies Lab at UC Berkeley. So wearable devices are becoming more and more popular, um, and as they become more popular, they're becoming more diverse, both in functionality, but also in the places that we wear them. So we have head-mounted um, wearable <coughs> devices, wrist-worn, things that go around our ears, um, shoes, socks, as well as smart textiles that are being developed at the moment. Um, while this landscape of wearable devices is expanding, there's also a variety of locations on the body that are underexplored. So these include the hair, the skin, the face, and the fingernails. And there's been some great work to come out of Kai and some other places that have begun to explore the opportunities for wearable devices at these places. Uh, this work is focused on designing a fingernail-worn uh, device. So there's four motivating reasons behind why we want to do this. The first is that the fingernail provides a rigid, static surface for attaching electronics. This allows us to avoid some of the durability and wiring complications that come with skin and other flexible electronics. Uh, the second is that fingernails are an ever-present yet subtle display. Our fingernails are very public, but at the same time very private because they're a part of our bodies. Um, third, there's already a broad cultural acceptance of modifying and adorning our fingernails. And finally, and perhaps the most important, uh, the fingernails are really at the heart of interaction. So whenever we're interacting with technology, tools, and others, uh, the fingernails are right there in the middle of the interaction. So while designing a fingernail-worn device provides us with unique opportunities, it also comes with a unique set of challenges. The most concerning of these is power. So there's been some related work, um, and they've approached this problem with powering these very small fingernail-worn devices in a number of different ways. Uh, there have been uh, projects that use chemical sensing instead of electronics. There's also been projects that use NFC and RFID without any onboard computation. And then there's been projects that have had more computation on board as well as greater affordances, but these typically need to be um, powered continuously for them to be able to operate. So we are leveraging recent developments um, in wireless power to power our devices. That's how we're approaching this constraint and challenge. Um, so wireless power is becoming very commercial with a lot of phones and wireless chargers. There's also been research at Disney that's working on an, an entire room that can be powered wirelessly at once. Uh, as well as wireless power, we're also leveraging e-ink displays, and in doing so, we are um, presenting a new type of wearable device that does not need to be removed, charged, or cared for in the traditional sense. So we are presenting Alternel, and Alternels are powered wirelessly and opportunistically through interaction with enabled objects. So these objects include the ever-expanding Internet of Things, as well as any personal object that you can augment with a power transmitter. The e-ink display um, allows these displays to persist even once you're removed from the object that's powering them. So to kind of walk you through the title, um, alternails are ambient and that the display is always visible and always available, yet it changes really slowly and it's um, not always kind of an in-your-face blinking LED, something of that sort. Uh, they're batteryless and that they're powered wirelessly and they don't need to be removed or charged. Um, they are also stateful in that they maintain state um, as far as the e-ink and the power, um, sorry, and the memory on board of the microcontroller. Um, and they are also dynamic in that they change throughout the day. So the heart of our design is a custom designed PCB. Um, on board is our e-ink display. And we're using a flexible multi-dot display, but these can be manufactured in a number of intricate designs and at a very small scale. Uh, the key thing here with e-ink is that it's bi-stable, so it only needs power to change state, and it doesn't need any power to maintain state. So that's key for our design in that it can be charged um, only when you're interacting with objects. Then we have a wireless power receiver. We're using resonant inductive coupling for this. Um, it provides a low amount of power, but we only need a low amount of power for our e-ink display and microcontroller. We have an ATtiny85, and we also have an accelerometer on board. So. 
That is our custom PCB. Um, and then the e-ink display and the coil fold over to the other side to make it a little smaller. It's approximately 16 by 26 millimeters and about four and a half millimeters thick. Uh, this is a proof of concept prototype and we have designed it to be a lot smaller and also um, we can make the PCB a lot thinner. We've also designed some vinyl sticker overlays that allow users to personalize and customize with respect to fashion, function, and discretion. So I'm gonna walk you through how this works. Um, let's say you have a handful of altar nails and a smart object such as this cookie jar. Uh, when you approach the smart object and therefore the power transmitter, um, the alternator is powered, it, pre um, it performs a small amount of processing and it updates the e-ink display. As mentioned previously, these displays are bistable, so when you remove your hands from the power source and the objects, uh, the display will persist. So here's in a, kind of an expanded view of it in action. Um, we've unfolded the e-ink so that you can see what's happening, but it's um, being updated by the power supply uh, and then the dot persists once you move it away. So we've cultivated an intentionally limited design space, um, but there's still a wide variety of interactions within this space. So here's a small taste of some of those interactions. Um, similar to the cookie example, it can be used to express interests and in activities. For example, if you touch a turnstile on the way to a Colorado's Rockies game, perhaps you could have their logo appear on your fingernails. Um, you could also use it for habit tracking, such as um, tracking your water consumption um, or tracking the length of an activity such as how long your bike ride is or how long you've been practicing in instruments. Um, you can also use it to learn things about your environment, such as when the next bus is arriving. You could tap the bus stop and it could update your nails. Um, you could use it to learn things about the objects that you interact with, um, for example, wear and usage on different appliances. And finally, we're working on doing the new version, which is using NFC instead of wireless power. And this allows us to interact with more smart objects as well as mobile devices. And so this greatly expands uh, the interactions that we can have. And one example application is um, you could find a design that you like on your cell phone. Um, and just by interacting with the phone and holding it, it could update the e-ink display to display that design. So finally, we would like to uh, situate this work inside of the larger scope of wearable devices. And we view Alternail as a being a part of a new family of cosmetic computing devices, which we define as a landscape of wearable technologies that celebrate diversity across gender, race, and body types, and empower individuals with a more personal, playful, performative, and meaningful technique of dress. Thank you. Hi, Wendy Mackay from INRIA and University of Paris-Saclay. Um, very interesting stuff. Actually, I want one of these on my wristband, mm. not on my nails, but whatever. Um, <laughs> one of the things that's, that's, this is a display, mm -hmm. but there's also input technology that you could imagine, like mm -hmm. some kind of uh, an odo technology or something that would allow you to capture information as well. So have you thought about combining um, perhaps a transparent but input layer on top of the display so that you could see mm. the display but input through. So we haven't, um, that's definitely a good idea. Kind of when we think about input, we're thinking about the new NFC version where we can have data transfer as well as power. Um, and we do have an accelerometer on board and we can embed other sensors. So when we think about input, most of our future directions have been about how can we send information back to the object about how your